Okay, let's start. Um, my name is Wolfram. Um, I'm the I2C maintainer and want to tell you a bit about how I think I2C subsystem can be uh, a case study for what happens in, a, in parts of the Linux kernel. And first, I want to apologize a little. I woke up this morning and my voice is a little bit different than it was yesterday. I don't know why, but <laughs> um, I, I, I was not in an ice hockey game, but uh, uh, yeah, we, we have to live with it. So <coughs> I want to talk about my past roughly seven years now as being the I2C maintainer. And um, I'm fully aware that this is just uh, like I said in, in my description, it's not the shiniest and most sexiest part of the, ice, uh, of the Linux kernel, but uh, we have a few of such subsystems and I want to present the views and what can be uh, gen maybe generalized from that, especially when it comes to embedded because embedded is a huge user of I2C. And um, I'm open to comments and, and questions really also from other subsystems, but yeah, well, I'm really interested in discussion. And um, to make an introduction to, to the embedded case, um, this is, uh, I assume you all know this, this is a pretty simple diagram of an SOC. And you just see that an SOC has lots of different blocks like I2C, UART, SBI, you name them. Uh, other, other architectures would have that as, as separate cards or, or whatnot. But, um, SOC is really put this all together and, and want to have that supported to uh, offer a wide vi variety of changes. And so I2C is one, pu one puzzle piece which just has to work. It's not rocket science. And actually, it's super simple, which is sometimes a drawback because you could expect which is, it's a super simple thing we just get this I2C core, IP core done once and have a driver for it and we're done. No, it's actually so simple that people start reinventing the wheel all the time, which is super, super annoying. Um, and what it also means when it comes to uh, what uh, happens to me as a maintainer, it's what I think, I heard the term first from Thomas Gleichner, who said it's a fly-by subsystem. People come, dump their driver, and move on to, well, if they have still other subsystems to care about, like SPI, CAN controller, or whatnot. So it's, it's really different from maybe, uh, let's say, a GPU subsystem, where there's a huge GPU with a team working on it, and also constantly working on it to keep it supported. And you know, it's really, some people I just see once. They just come by, drop their driver, work on it, until it works nicely and then they go away. Um, as I mentioned before, it's also a good example because it's mainly used by embedded. The, uh, let's say the PC consumer side is pretty stable. They have a few drivers they're use, using for ages. So once in a while a bug fix comes, a bug fix comes, but it's mainly adding new IDs because they are still using the same IP core, which I think is awesome. <laughs> Um, that could, uh, I can re recommend that to the embedded world as well. Just keep using your IP cores. Um, but as it happens, uh, as I mentioned before, the wheel is reinvented for various use cases, which strengthens my point that embedded is a big user, be it of I2C, be it just for reading DDC of a monitor or just program some PMIX or whatnot. And what I also want to point out, uh, although I'm, I'm, I'm a contractor and I'm working for a, a huge company, of, it's my main contractor, is a Renesas, the, and I'm very happy that they fund some work which is related to the I2C subsystem. The maintaining part is still done in my spare time. And this is true for not all, but some of the flyby subsystems. Uh, just people who just want to keep things working, and they usually have to do that. Uh, there are quite some who have to do that in their spare time. Um, to mention, uh, so, <coughs> so this is this graph shows you the number of C files in the I2C drivers buses, which is mainly the name where all the I2C master controller drivers go. And I 
take the assumption that every C file matches to one driver. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And uh, here you can see what I just said before, Re reuse in the embedded world in that part of the embedded world is terrible. When I started, we had like around 70 drivers uh, for i 2 c for such a simple non-rocket, I mean, I, I understand, you know, you have, you have a network, if you look at network drivers, there's evolvement and 10, giga, 10 megabits, 100 megabits, one gigabit, but this is i 2 c I mean, yeah, there, there were, uh, we increased from 100 to 400 kilohertz in 1985 or something. <coughs> <laughs> and that's it, there's 10 bit ad address extension, nobody ever uses that. And then there's I3C, which is a complete new subsystem. So it doesn't really affect me, so. Yeah, but you can see, it goes up and goes up and goes up. And here it should be 2019 because 420 was uh, released late December. Um, we got currently to more than 125 drivers from 70. So people are sending me new drivers. So this is one part of uh, the bad news I have for you. I've seen in the last seven years, this fragmentation is really insane. I, from, I know there's not, from engineering perspective, it's not only a software engineer, there might be reason uh, when designing an SOC, but from my engineering perspective, this is just plain stupid. To reinvent the wheel all over and over again, and I wish, uh, I know you're not the right people probably <laughs> to change that, dis uh, that situation, but if you ever have the chance to talk to such people, just encourage them to re reuse their IP or even better use open cores and just work on it collaboratively. That's one of the bad news. There's a good news in that. For, so, for quite amount of time we told people to send in their patches and so we get upstream support for the drivers and people do that. So this is, this is the awesome part of that. So um, I, yeah, I know there's NVIDIA and with their GPUs, so we're, the problem is not completely solved, but in the embedded world, I think we're not doing too bad. I think the message got um, heard in a way that I have more bad news damn, people are sending patches and we don't have the capacity to deal with it anymore. Because uh, we still, well, I think you, I want that and I hope you agree, we want to keep the good quality of the Linux kernel. And that means a proper review. And that needs time. And if, if you see the increase of, of and that's only drivers sent in. Yeah? I was, the graph I was showing you was only new drivers. There's of course bug fixes and feature additions and all that. And that needs to be reviewed. And we have a, in that part for, uh, again, I'm talking mainly about flyby subsystems. It may be different uh, for like core kernel code or mm, people where large teams are working regularly on drivers, but for flyby subsystems, this is really, really a problem. And I, I can show that to you. So <coughs> I use patchwork to track my patches. And this is the list of uh, patches still marked as new, which where I didn't have the time to whatever, to accept them, to re reject them, or ask for a change. And so, uh, was it here, late 2012, yeah, there, I took over I2C, so here patchwork start, I started using patchwork, and of course I was a ma motivated maintainer who wanted to keep the backlog to zero, or want to process every patch, uh, process every patch. And I was really trying hard until 2014 for two years and here still, uh, at first, not so successful but still trying and yet you can clearly see when I gave up. It was, uh, yeah, let's, let's say late 2014, I just collapsed more or less. So it was really, it was a burnout feeling, burnout-like feeling. Where I, said, where I had to realize I can't handle this anymore. That's just too many patches and too few reviewers. And from the point I gave up, well, pfft, it started accumulating. So that's, that's a fact. I, this line shouldn't be too um, 
it's not as bad as that looks because, of course, this is the actual, um, I have to admit it's an old slide. So in that time, this was the actual development cycle. Of course, the, the, those were the packages flying around. And with uh, so, ma so few reviewers around, it, it, it's, it's a sad truth that it might take two development cycles for more serious patches to go in and in the I2C subsystem. It just takes this time. So this is uh, so relatively high because it just takes, it's just the process time. But here, that is still interesting. You, you can see that things accumulate. And um, so the first, the first lesson learned for me as a, as a maintainer was, well, there, is, there will be backlogs, so I, I just have to live with it and uh, try to relax, which is a bit sad because I have such an, I, I like proper technology and, and I, w I want to that to be different, but um, it's not, not possible without, because I alone, I won't scale. I can try harder and harder, but it won't help. It won't help the cause, the root cause of the problem. And the second lesson I learned when trying to deal with this the amount of patches was um, focus. On, remember, most of the thing was done in my spare time, and I really, really have to learn. Had to learn to focus I th on things I enjoy, which is for large parts uh, keeping the I square C core in shape and trying to model it that it can handle uh, requests from users. What I'm not so much interested is, is uh, like handling the 130th driver with some uh, yet another try and another uh, misreading of the I2C specification and doing the same bug over and over again. I'm definitely not interested in that, that's not fun. It's sometimes fun to work with individuals who are, you know, you have the spirit and say, yeah, I have this hardware and I want to give, get it upstream and so that's, that's fun, but the basic hardware, oh yeah, well, another one, no fun. So I, <coughs> I came to realize that uh, I should just drop maintaining that if it doesn't feel good to do that. And this is what I officially did. Um, I re, well, designed is too much, but I, I updated the maintainers file that I will still be maintaining the I2C core parts, but the I2C drivers part is set to odd fixes. Of course, I will, if there's a rare uh, ancient driver and there's someone posting a bug fix, I will have a look. But I don't want to be officially perceived as the maintainer for all the drivers. That is, uh, in, in, in that voluntary setup, it's not going to work. So people were lately, kind of lately, asking about root maintainership. As I think it's pretty successful in the DRM subsystem. <coughs> and they, I, was, I was directly asked, so why don't you do group maintainership? You have to let go. You don't have to possess. And I was just, which group? <laughs> and it's just, this is really when, when it shows that the different situation of a flyby subsystem, there is no one which I could, like, Hand off fifty percent of the work. It's okay. I tr no, it should be. Well, it's back again. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, you mean buttons do things? That's interesting. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's super difficult. I have sub-maintainers. I'm very, very th thankful to, for them, uh, to them because they really take uh, maintainership in parts. I'm uh, either not very, I don't know much about ACPI, so I'm happy to have experienced people there. And Peter Rosen is a guy who really likes complex I2C setup with all the locking schemes and he dives into that and finds solutions. So I'm happy he's here. And I think we collaborate pretty well, but it's not really a group maintainership because uh, they jump in once in a while um, when, when they see a driver, they provide some feedback, but not on a regular basis. 
and you, the problem just turned, was it became really visible this, this year. So I was ill for like two or three weeks. And I wrote this mail to the Alcam Mail and I2C mailing list saying, sadly, I've been tied to bed for a few days now, not in a condition to really work on I2C. I think it's annoying, but no catast catastrophe. However, it shows that I'm single point of failure for I2C patches, which I don't like. So I'm open for group maintainership. Uh, if you think you're a reliable candidate, please get in, get in touch with me. I got one response to this mail saying one line, get well soon. <laughs> well, I, it's a bit toxic. So I, actually I was thankful for this mail because I knew this guy and he, he, he's kind of a friend and so uh, it gave me the feeling that I'm not totally ignored. <laughs> but it still shows that for I2C it's not as easy just save do group maintainership so and I think it applies for other subsystems apply by subsystems as well so the third lesson I learned is um, I still have to apply some divide and conquer but I have to take it to the extreme and so I look started looking for driver maintainers individual driver maintainers it's um, not so much about like uh, we share this whole I2C subsystem, but really I, the only solution I thought was uh, viable for the short term was like going to people and say, do you want to take care of this driver? Do you want to take care of this driver? And um, that works okay-ish. <coughs> so I got some people showing really interest in the driver and things got better. Um, I got some people who initially said yes and then disappeared. That was sad, but it's not totally unexpected. I got people who first were enthusiastic and then their email bounced. So that <laughs> happens too. <laughs> and there are drivers which I, which um, had really trouble finding people. Uh, although they were part of kind of famous or well-known um, SOC manufacturers. That was uh, one thing I will talk about later. <coughs> it left still a huge problem, uh, who reviews new drivers? If I look for, for individual maintainers, for drivers, who reviews new drivers, so that's still basically me, and which is okay for small drivers, but if, uh, if you have a driver like this, where they really, they did, I feel sorry for them. They did everything. It's a full support for this driver, so it's pretty complex. It has uh, master and slave support. Slave support is pretty rare, but they did it all at once. Uh, to interface multiple bosses, both ACPI and device sheets. So basically everything which is there is supported, re resulting in 2,500 lines of code, which after some inspection I found it's not terrible code, but you could see that some experience in I3C, uh, in, in Linux kernel hacking is missing. And reviewing 2,500 lines of code in your spare time, <laughs> it's still a thing. So what I tried to do here, uh, so this uh, came from a Mellanox email address. Mellanox is kind of a, if you look at the statistics, it's kind of a big contributor to the Linux kernel. Um, and I knew they had some other drivers in, uh, in my subsystem and some of the people were kind of active. And so I CC'd them, put them on CC and asked them, can you help me bringing the driver from your company to mainline? And can you check like the basic Linux kernel development stuff and I will then take care of the I2C specific stuff? No response. So uh, I think we, so this driver is, it's not lost because the patch is out there, but it's not upstream yet. And when we're looking at drivers not being upstream, I think we lost, since, since I started with this um, looking for maintainers somewhere last year, and since then I think we lost five or six drivers, which could have been upstream, which are not yet. It 
should be turned on. <laughs> yes. Have you considered staging? Driver staging for such a new driver? Uh, actually, I didn't. Um, <coughs> have to think about it if it's a really good idea. Um, okay, but uh, th this is one of the problem. The other problem is uh, what I said before. There are drivers uh, from well-known manufacturers um, which did not, did not have a maintainer. Uh, for, a l so for a long time, the NXP one, I mean, INX is not it's used in the embedded industry, right? And there, are, uh, there's NXP, Pangotronics, <laughs> uh, using using it, and there was no maintainer, and people were sending bug reports. They were sending patches to fix bugs, which were on a hardware level detail I was not familiar with, so I couldn't tell if it was good or not. And the fourth lesson was I let, I, I couldn't handle it. As I said, I can't scale that much, so I let these problems now escalate. I let these drivers drop off and I let these bugs be around until someone is annoyed, which is not me, <laughs> is annoyed enough uh, so that maintainership is taken over. And luckily someone from Pangotronics finally took over the uh, IMX driver, so I hope this case is served now. But in my subsystem, this is a reality. So um, there is a scaling problem and it causes issues. I'm, I'm an engineer who likes good technology. This breaks my heart, but I want to keep sane. Because if I'm burned out and uh, need some medical treatment and so nobody, it neither helps Linux nor me. So um, this is where we are now. And sho showing this graph again, um, do you notice here, you, there are two kind of plateaus, right? you know, where nothing much happened. This is where I learned the lesson that I only um, should care about things I personally like. Because here, that was a, here was a, it was a bit of a burnout phase. And then this infamous last GPL enforcement threat also came in, which killed quite some of my motivation. So um, I was not in the most productive mood. This is one thing. And this here. You can see this was this where I started, where I have this paradigm shift, where I thought I have to switch to find more people supporting me. I have to find per driver maintainers. So I really focused on fin finding uh, driver maintainers instead of reviewing patches. Um, now that I found a few of them, I, uh, um, it gets better again. <coughs> yeah, but it all shows that uh, I'm I'm just a human being who tries to solve issues and I'm not like part of a machine which works uh, yeah, without, yeah, you, you get the picture. And this picture, uh, it, it was carried around. So Jonathan Corbett uh, wrote in LWN in 2016. I'm not sure he would agree today. So that being granted, but for years, this picture was carried around. The overall picture is one of a, a development process that continues to function like a relatively well-tuned machine. The number of contributors continu continues to increase, hooray. <laughs> the patch flow is steady, awesome. No, it is awesome, it is really awesome, but we, there are downs downsides to it. And there do not appear to be many process scalability issues in sight. This is wrong. And I think uh, there's a bigger understanding of that now, but we also need to um, express this people who still have the old picture. This is not true anymore. We have to do something. And so I've been, oh, no, I need to drink something first. Sorry. So I've been to plumbers, 
uh, in Lisbon, what was it, two weeks ago. <coughs> and there Dmitry Vukov from Google gave a talk also pointing out uh, development process issues within the Linux kernel. And um, he proposed that we need radical changes to keep up with, with uh, patch flows and to keep the quality of the Linux kernel. Um, there's, I kind of, no, I like the talk. It, it was, on, on the one hand, it was yet another talk pointing out the problem again and again, so it was not radically new, but uh, he showed some passion and he got, I think, a good moment because uh, Kernel Maintainer Summit was next to it, so people uh, had some time to look at, to pick up this uh, and, and look look at uh, what could be improved. And I wasn't part of the Maintainer Summit, but I, I read the minutes and uh, saw that there were things and items discussed and also on the case summit discuss mailing list there were some quite lengthy mails about what could be changed. And um, for me it's a mixed bag because some, most of the stuff I think is good to have like Const Constantine, the uh, sys administrator of the kernel org infrastructure proposed some interesting ideas of tooling how we can uh, improve our workflow, uh, also for collabor being collaborative, being more secure and all that. And I re I'd really like to have that. So let's hope that gets funded by the Linux Foundation. He's trying the Linux Foundation. I don't know who funds it. It would be just good to have. <laughs> um, there were also workflow issues which could be improved and documentation, how, to, how other developers should know more things in, in advance so they can in send in proper patches. And um, I want all that, but for a flyby subsystem, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So um, it will help not my main problem, which, which, which is I need more people to help me review stuff. If I have a better workflow, that saves me a few minutes per week, maybe an hour per week, and I can do one hour more of review. That is nothing close to handle all the patches coming in. Um, so yeah. Like I said, as much as I want all this which is being discussed right now, I think um, the core problem is we need more people and uh, to maintain the quality we, we currently have and we enjoy. And I think the embedded world being such a high user of flyby subsystems is good to take, if they want to keep the quality, it's good to take some responsibility. So. If I may propose something, um, the first thing I, I'd really like is we need to send out a new message. The message, send your patches upstream, it's better for you. I think this is heard good enough. Uh, we get more patches than we can handle. The next message would be great that we have all your patches, but uh, would you be interested in taking part in the quality assurance? And by that, I'm <coughs> I really mean uh, about core infrastructure. So I re today, actually, I uh, skimmed through the maintainer's file and see that quite some companies are taking maintenance of their drivers, which is good. But it still leaves um, some of the core, well, the maintaining of the core to a few people. And if the interest also in, in ex changing the core and getting new drivers accepted, so up to the point where we can have a new maintainer for the driver, we need further assistance. And I think it would be good to send out that message that it is needed so people can react what they, they think is accordingly. One, one thing would be obviously to, if they have an employee who likes uh, reviewing stuff, then yeah, well, give him some time, uh, work time to do that. Uh, if you know someone who likes doing that but doesn't get money for him, well, that could help also. So I wonder, a few years ago, I gave a similar talk, we have a scaling problem. I mean, I'm talking about this for years now, it feels a bit like climate change. But <laughs> a few years ago, I said, um, I, when c the core infrastructure initiative 
was created, I said, I don't want that for the kernel because that is a reaction, but and I want an action. But maybe the if it's be, if it's an action and not a reaction, maybe the kernel infrastructure initiative where there's a pool guided by someone where people uh, or people companies who uh, are interested to keep the uh, quality of the Linux kernel where they just can pay in and there's someone making sure it's well distributed. I think it's a, at least an idea worth discussing. I, I'm not saying it's the solution, uh, but uh, yeah, we have to discuss ideas. And if it all does not help and um, enough maintainers think the quality is, it's too hard to maintain the qualities, maybe we should do go on strike for recycle or thing. I think that would be <laughs> super fun thing to do and uh, <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so the audience said I should, we should all stay here because it's a national sport in France. So, yeah, so uh, I chose a good point <laughs> to present my idea. <laughs> so, with all that being said, I still want to emphasize again I, I'm biased. I'm biased because uh, I'm mainly an embedded kernel developer. I am the maintainer of a flyby subsystem. It might be different for others, so I'd like to hear about that. And most of my maintenance work is still voluntary. It might, I don't know how, it's, if it's how it feels if you work at Red Hat and are paid to do your maintenance job. So with that all being said, let's see how. Oh, I think we still have 10 minutes for questions and comments. Um, I'd love to hear about it. So thank you very much. So you actually mentioned that you would like to have some pool of people that would be distributed across subsystems, but how do you handle the domain-specific knowledge of that subsystem? I mean, it takes a while for the people to kind of understand the subsystem in depth to do something useful. Yeah, um, I think part, part of the solution is that we need to educate people. You won't have... Um, okay, I'll let, let this just first happen because it's, it's too exciting. Um, I don't think people will pop out of nowhere and be at full speed right now. Um, but yeah, if, if there's uh, if there's more attention to it, um, I think uh, then we also have the resources to uh, grow people who can then do the job. Well, the infrastructure does not scale currently. Um, that is, uh, if you say the maintaining infrastructure does not scale, I think this is the part which Constantine is addressing. So I mm. think they are shop. So yeah, I'm relatively new to kernel world. I was a backend developer for 15 years, but I know I2C very well thanks to my like uh, I'm working for a houseware company that does lots of relay stuff and ovens etc and uh, i would like to like offer my review uh, <laughs> power voluntarily i mean awesome <coughs> i have quite uh, quite some boards of imx and sunsea architecture also uh, maybe we can talk later and i can do at least what i think i can do and sure. help you okay? cool so the, the general um, path to do that is, of course, is to, to subscribe to the mailing list yeah. and uh, start reviewing. And I will uh, keep an eye on, on your reviews and uh, gui you. guide you through it. This is also what the, oh, I didn't mention that before. This, it takes also from my review time, but I think it's worth it. If I have a maintainer for every driver, then I means I have more than 100 maintainers uh, in my subsystem, so you, this you is can go on strike much better way. That way, you know, you can march on the streets. <laughs> I square C, I square C. <laughs> like so, but but it's a complex complex matrix, you know. We might uh, all this review stuff, and so it's it's also based on trust, so and experience, and 
this is getting complex and um, it deal, yeah, it's, but I think it's worth it. Otherwise, uh, it's the best thing I know, I currently know which would scale. There might be better ones, but this is it for now. Uh, so my impression of what is proposed by Constantine and others is more like um, patch management. So more patches come in or help you get more patches in and more patches out or more patches organized or something like that. Um, but maybe what you're complaining about is there's nothing really about the helping with the contents of the patches. Um, yeah. Can you, do you have some idea of what help you would like with respect to the contents of the patches? You mean I need reviewers? No, no, but uh, like what about the contents of the patches? Is there something, some kind of tooling that could help you mm. understand the contents of the patches better <sighs> and somehow come to decisions better or find problems that's, better? That's, that's an impression I also got at Linux Plumbers that a lot of people focus on the tooling. Um, but I think the core of the problem is not solvable with tooling. I think there might be can tooling here and there can help, but I want to address the core problem, and this is patch review, and I currently I don't think this can be solved with tooling. Uh, yeah, that would be an AI to review patches, yes. <laughs> no. But uh, Julia, if you have an awesome software proving me wrong, then tell me about it. <laughs> Who do you think is responsible for preventing maintainer burnout? Pardon? Who do you think is responsible for preventing maintainer burnout? Yeah. So, I mean, lot, lots of people use Linux for products. Do you think they're responsible for it? Or, so, you know, who, who should step up and try to prevent maintainer burnout by funding it or trying to offer help? That's why I said we, we need to, to get the message out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, do you think I, th I know. I, I, so the, the four lessons I learned when I talked to maintainers, especially flyby maintainers, not all of them learned the lesson, and they still fight uh, the amount of patches um, just to keep the backlog close to zero because they feel some responsibility as a maintainer to do all of the work. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I tell them... Um, you can try as hard as you want. You won't scale enough. Just relax and t take care of the yourself. They feel relieved. It's of course there's a bad feeling to it, like I mentioned, because en as an engineer, uh, we want to have good technology and especially a part we're responsible for. So this is my talk is really about getting that message out to maintainers so they can act and saying, hey, we need to do something, otherwise I will burn out. Was it? And then we can just voice and together and start for looking looking for solutions. Okay. So you seem to think that it's maintainers need to look out for each other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question. It's a bit related. It's more maybe of a personal question. Is uh, you said you're doing most of the work on your spa spare time. How would you feel if a uh, company would want to pay you to to do this? Uh, maybe since you're a contractor, or if they paid someone else to, to do this job, would it, would it solve this, this issue? Um, as long as there, there's no, as the, the, well, as you can freely review and not being biased to something like, uh, but give precedence to our patches, or the yeah. church, you should be really, really free in what, how you maintain. Um, I think this uh, this would be great, but you have to pay attention um, to really s solve the problem on a, on a for all Linux and not only for. I mean, for me, if, if somebody would do it for I2C, it would be great for me, and the I2C subsystem, but only for part of Linux. Um, yeah, yeah, but it can prove pr it can prove a model can exist and. Yeah, sure. Maybe yeah, yeah, sure. I think so. If I have nothing, uh, as long as freedom is guaranteed, I'm all open for that to be paid work. I think it should be. I mean, there's quite and some I money around in the Linux uh, and world. Yes. And I have another question or remark. I don't think it's po still possible to carry on like that because uh, Linux is so, is so complex. We, we, the community has the same problem with Free and 30. Free and 30 had no money. It was very difficult to, to, to maintain. And uh, 
I'm not the, the main specialist of Puyan's RT, but uh, if, you want, if you want to have a nice driver, uh, you need money. Yeah. It's not possible now to, to, do, to do that in spare time. It was, it was okay in the 1990s, but, no, but not now. Not possible anymore. I don't, this is my opinion. And th this is where, where it goes when I say the next message. Uh, your own. Um, the driver, the quality assurance also needs time and money. Because no. I square C is very, as I square C is very important for the, in the industry. It's not a, a specific bus somewhere. So. Yeah, yeah it's important, but it's, it's not in the news. Should so. be possible to get <laughs> money for that, <laughs> for SPI, for SQIC, for etc. Yeah, but for a fly-by subsystem like i 2 c it's rather fragmented. So basically, it's difficult, I guess, for a company to just pay you full-time to be a maintainer there. Basically, what you need is 50 vendors paying you one hour a month or something like that. I, I would be happy to try out all of the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> just to get experience. Yeah, well. Maybe we should just change the the patches we should say sorry you cannot get your you cannot get your patches for the gpu if your i square c if your i square c driver sucks it should be as simple as that because they really want their gpu drivers to, to be in, in the kernel or their changes for real time or whatever then we should take the discussion at a higher level so so what i do is what i said before if i if i know it's from a company or um, which has another driver upstream or I know people and then I just try to get them in the boat it worked so I gave a bad example where it didn't work but there are examples where it actually worked so where mm -hmm. they said yeah, yeah we will care of the base thing and then they got a better driver and I reviewed the ice crazy parts and drivers went in so there's also the situation that uh, different teams are working on different IP blocks in the SOC so you can't really pull people from one team on the other to review stuff. I know about that, but that's not. That, that's more of a comment on Ricardo's remark. Yeah. Uh, but I had another suggestion. Do you think it would be kind of viable to have some sort of crowdfunding campaign for maintainers? That would, I mean that's an idea worth thinking further. Hmm. I, I, w I won't say like, like I said, the kernel infrastructure initiative or funding a maintainer privately or doing some crowdfunding. I think this is all worth trying out and thinking more about it. But I think it's time to do that. So I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, these scalability issues are not only in Linux, it's in other projects as well. Yeah, sure. Even the worse. Main, the maintainers yeah. are getting burnt out. Even and worse. Uh, I think that, so, they did something similar for the GPG developer, and he was the only one that maintaining GPG, if I'm remembering correctly. I think they got some funding from the core infrastructure initiative, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 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 it was three years ago. Yeah, I, I some s once in a while I work with the SIGROC project, which does measurement software for measurement devices, and they're, of course, in a way worse situation. I mean, the Linux kernel is a dream world compared to that. Yeah, yeah, open OCDs and all. Okay, another. Uh, in your experience, is there a design specific to uh, host adapters, I2C uh, host adapters that you think uh, should be modeled after, especially since I've seen a lot of IP cores reused or they, they look very similar to like Synopsys IP cores or Designware, whatever it is called now. Um, and then are there drivers that we should look at to then maybe model after if we do have to create a new one with slight variation? Um, yeah, I, what, what I can say is that the syn design where driver is uh, widely and happily used. Um, so I think it serves the purpose well. I am, of course, a friend of open hardware. So there, there's also the open course uh, I2C controller and I think you can uh, do with that what you want and still uh, still being compatible with the driver uh, only with minor modifications. But I'm not a hardware engineer. I haven't used that core myself, so I can't really tell how good it is from a hardware point of view. 
but uh, from a software and Linux point of view, open course has some happy users. So. And are there specific drivers that you point to to as like examples or maybe as a basis for other drivers that do need to be slightly different? Not so much because uh, there are drivers using basically bit banging, some have FIFOs, some have message queues. Um, I can, FIFOs are okay, I wouldn't go for message queuing, so um, keep it simple. You know. And what, what we're really good is changing the git history of what happened to drivers to prevent of repeating mistakes like uh, there are even on hardware level, some engineers did not understand that the combination of a stop and start condition is not the same as a repeated start and stuff like this. Yeah. So that for sure. So um, according to my clock, we're five minutes over time, but how, how is it? It's okay to stop or to continue? <laughs> okay, wow. There are more questions. Can you? Ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a no. <laughs> so I didn't get your point about the changing the Git history. What did you mean exactly? People look back in Git and use bad decisions made by other people, or what's the problem? Uh, just to get an idea of what things can what can go wrong. When you when you did so, I, I understood the question. So, what what should we take care about when wanting to have a new iSquare she on our SSC? And um, I try really try it uh, that the patch descriptions tell not what was done, but why it was done and what was the cause, root cause of the problem. And because iSquare she looks so simple, it, I think it's helpful to just read what went wrong in drivers. So what gory details were missed. Um, so you prevent this right from from the start. So and this is also an advice to you. If you if you're developing a driver and want to submit it upstream and there's no response from the maintainer, one thing you can do is check the review of the latest drivers going in to see what was criticized there or change check the git log of what of a driver which is similar to yours, what happened, what was needed to be fixed. And it makes a good impression to, to, to a maintainer if you present a version two, although you didn't, the maintainer didn't review anything, you prevent, present a version two and say, oh, I digged in a little deeper and found out this and that. I think it will give you a priority boost. It does for me. <laughs> So I think that was it. I'm still around also for kernel recipes. So if you have questions or want to discuss things, uh, I'm, I'm there. And so thank you for your attention and for your questions. <laughs>